When we talk about stormwater management systems, we are talking about two things. Number one, to control the quantity of water. In other words, to control the amount of water that will end up in the, um, the water body that we have. Could be a lake, could be a wetland or a river. And also to control the quality of water. You can find a lot of things on the surface of a parking lot or a street. All of those are washed into the inlets and eventually end up in rivers and lakes and water bodies, right? We want to control the quality of water. What are those things? Leaves, for example, right? Or all the cars that we have over here, they leak, right? They leak oil. So all of that oil is going to be washed off of the surface into the inlet, into the storm sewers, and it's eventually into our water body system. So we want to control the quality as well. The quality side is obvious why we want to control that because we care about the water quality in the receiving uh, body of water, right? Let's talk about the quantity. How does that work? So in the natural environment, let's say before development in this area, pre-development, if I want to show you the hydrograph for this area pre-development, and remember that the hydrograph is discharge and time over here. Pre-development, because water can infiltrate into the soil, pre-development means that there is no parking lot here, there is no street over here. So the natural landscape. Because water can infiltrate naturally into the soil, it takes a lot of time for water to infiltrate and recharge the groundwater and eventually end up into the receiving body of water. So uh, the pre-development hydrograph might look like this. And again, this is pre-development. All right, now your company has built a lot of parking lots and streets and paved a lot of areas over here, right? You want to know how does the hydrograph change? How have you changed the existing hydrograph pre-development, post-development? So this is the post-development condition. Obviously, because water travels faster on pa paved areas, so this peak, the peak of the hydrograph is going to be reached faster, right? And also the amount of water that you're going to have eventually in your storm sewer system is going to be higher as well. So the peak is going to be higher and it's going to be faster. It's going to look like this. And this is going to be the peak for post-development. This hydrograph, post-development hydrograph, and this QP is something that we want to avoid. Why? Because this peak discharge over here, it's a very high value. It has the potential to overwhelm the pipes over here. What do I mean by overwhelm? Well, the pipes have a diameter, right? This Q might be too large, so the pipes cannot handle that discharge. That means overwhelming the sewers, right? Also, this peak might cause some type of uh, erosion in the receiving body of water that could be a river, right? So we do not want to have this peak. We want to have the, the pre-development peak. In other words, we want to lower the peak to the pre-development condition before urbanization, right? This process is called attenuation. Attenuation meaning is, uh, means that we want to lower the peak of the hydrograph, post-development hydrograph, to its original state pre-development stage. Also, we want to delay the peak of the hydrograph. Right now, this is time to peak. We want to delay this as much as possible for the, for the flood control purposes, right? So we want to move this peak to the right-hand side of this graph as much as possible. All right. So in order to do that, and this was related to quantity. So in order to do quantity cont control and in order to do uh, quality co control, we need to have some components of this stormwater management systems. And the components of stormwater management systems are called stormwater control measures or best management practices. 
Examples of stormwater control measures could be uh, infiltration basins, it could be vegetation swells or detention and retention basins that we are going to talk about in the next parts of this video series. Um, but right now, I just wanted to give you this introduction of how stormwater, stormwater management systems work. Uh, let me show you some photos of um, best management practices or stormwater control measures so you have an idea of how they work. The first stormwater control measure that I want to talk about is called the vegetated swell. And you can see on this slide some photos that I have provided for you. Swells are a type of stormwater treatment composed of vegetation and a porous medium. The vegetation catches pollutants carried by stormwater, decreases the rate of flow and volume of runoff, and also stabilizes the soil on the shoreline or bank, which reduces erosion caused by surface runoff. Maintaining a buffer upstream of uh, surface waters, are um, uh, essentially the bodies of water that receive stormwater, reduces pollutant impacts from sediment phosphorus, nitrogen, and high temperature waters. Let me tell you some applications of vegetated swells. Uh, they can be applied in for natural drainage on a residential lot. Uh, they can be applied, a lot, applied along local roads in a place of uh, curb and gutter, parking lot islands and medians, highway medians. Essentially, they are first line of defense upstream of the stormwater system when it comes to stormwater management. Bioretention cells are another type of pest management practices or stormwater control measures. Bioretention practices have been widely used for the past decade and the experience that we have had over the past decade uh, suggests that these bioretention practices, when properly designed and constructed and maintained, perform very well over long periods of time. However, it should be noted that design, construction, and maintenance of these bioretention practices can be complex. Specifically, maintenance and operation of these bioretention cells can be a challenge. The next stormwater control measure that I want to talk about is green roofs. Green roofs typically occur at the beginning of the stormwater treatment process. We also call them stormwater treatment train, right? Because it's a process starting from somewhere and ending to the receiving body of water. Um, green roofs provide filtering of suspended solids and pollutants associated with uh, suspended solids. Although it should be noted that the total suspended solid or TSS concentrations uh, from traditional green roofs are generally low. The photo also shows you the green roof on top of the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the last stormwater control measure that I'm going to talk about in this video is stormwater ponds. Stormwater ponds are typically installed as an end of pipe best management practice or uh, stormwater control measure at the downstream end of the treatment train. So usually these types of ponds are the downstream of your watershed in an area. Stormwater pond size and outflow regulation requirements can be significantly reduced with the use of additional upstream best management practices such as bioretention cells or green roofs and so on and so forth. However, because of uh, their size, the stormwater pond size and versatility, these ponds are usually the only management practice um, used at a site and because of that must be designed to provide uh, suitable and adequate water quality and water quantity treatment for uh, all regulated storms. All right, this is our video. I am going to talk about specifically stormwater ponds in the next videos and show you how you can design uh, stormwater ponds.